All right, so next we look at the uh, network and antivirus uh, overview. So um, overview of the computer viruses and malicious codes. And again, uh, we can also call malware. Uh, computer viruses, okay, what's the definition? A computer virus is a set of self-replicable instruction or program code compiled independently or embedded in computer programs to adversely affect a computer used by damaging its function or data. Okay, so this is um, a virus. Okay, so some of the virus, they, they actually can actually self-replicate uh, to other folders or maybe other files. And some of the virus, they are very nasty where they will look for our system, operating system, uh, operating system files, and they will try to rename it or maybe try to delete some of the important files so that the next time when you try to boot up your computer and um, you, you, you are stuck with that, okay? Uh, these are computer viruses, okay? And they are very good in uh, hiding themselves uh, with another computer program, another EXE program. So when you execute that program, the viruses will be executed at the same time, okay? Uh, malicious code. A malicious code is a program that covertly inlay codes into another program and run intrusive and disruptive programs and damage the security and integrity of the, the data on an infected computer. Okay? Yeah, so this is actually uh, the code, the, the, some of the malicious uh, code uh, kind of a program that they actually can change, they can alter other people's program. Okay? Um, so here are the differences between viruses, uh, worm, and Trojan horses. Um, so first we look at the uh, comparison of uh, existence. Uh, viruses, uh, parasitic, same goes for Trojan horse, parasitic. So parasitic basically means they have to rely on other program to perform the damage. Okay? For worm, uh, they actually run independently as, as a program by itself. Okay? Uh, so viruses, they will insert itself into host program. Uh, worm, they can replicate self uh, replicating themselves into... Okay, for worm, they actually tries to go into other people's computer within the same network. For viruses, they mostly uh, will sit within their own uh, computer and then they replicate only within that computer itself. Okay. Um, so Trojan horses, most of the features they are not meant to be replicated. The main purpose are basically is to affect the target machine to become a zombie host so that the uh, uh, other people can, uh, the, the hacker can perform a remote control on this zombie host and to launch a tag, which the one I just mentioned before, the DDoS attack, you know, we have like hundreds and thousands of computers affected, uh, we call it the uh, zombie computers, uh, they actually will launch attack on behalf of a certain control, okay. Um, trigger mechanism, okay, uh, computer user, um, this is by a program and this is by remote control by hacker which is sitting out, outside there in the internet. Uh, affected ta target, this is the affect file system. Uh, for worm, they affect the system performance and also network performance. For Trojan horse, uh, uh, they could actually uh, steal your information and also they could also perform denial services. Like for example, I mentioned before Trojan horse one of the, the possibilities that they could probably try to collect all your keystroke and send it back to the uh, to the to the hackers okay um, so what's the preventive me measurement so for viruses the only way is to remove from the host program or maybe to perform a offline scanning it means you have to bring down your OS and you probably need to put in a, an antivirus OS and the antivirus software and perform an offline boot up to another OS and to perform a scan. Uh, for worm, they probably, uh, most of the thing is because of the, uh, is, is the vulnerability that was discovered by the operating system. And so all we need to do is to patch the operating system 
and and uh, most likely the worm uh, cannot be uh, replicated anymore. And Trojan horses to prevent Trojan horse uh, implementation, uh, this one will normally have to, um, you know, to have a good firewall and uh, IPS system to 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 detect uh, the kind of a uh, Trojan horse. Um, so antivirus uh, technologies. Um, so uh, if based on the zone, there are two types of uh, antivirus technology. So one is called single device uh, antivirus. This is actually an antivirus program which to be installed on individual machines and uh, network antivirus means uh, basically uh, the antivirus is actually shared um, so for example like we have the uh, uh, a good uh, let's say for example web application proxy where every traffic will have to go through uh, every user traffic for example this is a user and uh, you have to connect to the company proxy where the proxy will have the uh, antivirus engine built in and uh, all the web traffic before you go to internet all the web traffic will have to pass through the uh, the proxy server and the proxy server will scan every single file your html your jpeg your avi your mp4 your exe programs that you download and uh, it will make sure everything is cleaned before sending back to you so this is a kind of a network antivirus okay but uh, please do remember if the user leaves this company right? so if they go to go back home or maybe go to any other public internet space space then we have to rely on the single device antivirus okay and this is actually a program uh, it's called the uh, process um, Explorer and uh, you guys actually can download this for free it's called the Process Explorer this is by Sys Internals uh, and, and uh, you can actually do a Google search for this um, and uh, one thing good about this uh, software is that they actually allows you to look at your process uh, not only like uh, in our windows you just press control or delete bring up the task manager um, so it actually tells you even more uh, first you, it tells you about the process name and uh, it also tells you the uh, capable of identifying any desktop program you can click the button here uh, and also there's a the process description okay and also which company that built this software okay alright so here we have some examples like a bunch of here uh, Microsoft um, process right? and some of them are like for example Symantec or maybe there are some VMware running here okay so if you, um, this is actually good if you if you are observing this uh, process uh, from time to time because sometimes uh, you know after a while if you load some install a new program and suddenly there's some suspicious program that appears here which is unknown or maybe there are some other malware then you, you probably can uh, take some action on that right All right so this is the the one that I just mentioned the network uh, antivirus application scenario All right so this is example it could be a firewall yeah it, it could be a firewall or it could be a firewall with proxy or it could be a, a, an external proxy that uh, will scan every single uh, file that we download from internet so that they can differentiate between affected uh, viruses file or maybe compare with a, a normal file okay all right so yeah this is the one that I just mentioned so we ha we have two types uh, two modes of implementing the gateway antivirus so the first is called the proxy scanning mode and the second one is called flow scanning mode so proxy scanning mode means all the data packets passing through the gateway that require virus detection are transparently transmitted to the gateways protocol stack of catching and then send the, to the virus detection engine okay so this is the one that I mentioned uh, so we have PC uh, sending the request to uh, the proxy server okay and then uh, the proxy on be on the on behalf will then send the request to the internet okay uh, we also have the uh, second type is called the flow scanning mode 
uh, file signatures are extracted for matching against local signature database. This mode relies on stateful inspection and protocol parsing technologies. Okay, so flow scanning mode means uh, while the packet is uh, moving in and out from the uh, virus uh, from the firewall, and everything is being scanned. But definitely, if you want to go for this mode, uh, then your firewall has to be capable enough to handle all the traffic, all the all your traffic from intranet to internet. And how does the firewall antivirus works? All right. So first of all, uh, we have the uh, uh, virus detection by the IEA, and then we have also the antivirus, the uh, the process, uh, the processing. All right. So um, so from the internet, we will constantly download the uh, signature database. Okay. So constantly we will get the updates of the the database. And uh, it's just like any other antivirus uh, machine, right? Uh, or any an antivirus uh, software. Um, so, and then this is the part where they will perform the virus uh, detection. Uh, so, and uh, after that, all the network traffic uh, infected by some of the files are infected by viruses. Then the next thing they will go through this process called the application protocol identification. So this is the one that to determine what kind of a, a traffic is this? Is this a FTP traffic or if this if this is a SNMP? Uh, if it's a SNMP, then maybe uh, or maybe POP for download email. So you no, know, they will differentiate different types. So are, are the protocol supported? For example, if this is a remote desktop protocol RDP, then maybe cannot be uh, cannot be scanned. Maybe. Then they will go to no, no virus detected, and then therefore they move on the traffic. And uh, if the protocol supported, then they will go to the next one. Uh, is there a whitelist matches? If yes, that means this file has been approved previously, right? The signature has been approved, then the, the, the file can be, you know, a, a permit to pass through. If no, then they will go through virus scanning, and if the virus are detected, then the uh, next question is, uh, is the virus exception match match now again sometimes there are false alert there are false alert that means some of the packet uh, it was treated as uh, like 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 a virus packet for example uh, let's say for example vnc okay or maybe team viewer right so maybe some of the team viewer uh, uh, for, to some of the uh, antivirus uh, software uh, team viewers consider um, a, a remote control software, you know, but to maybe some of the people, uh, I, I need TeamViewer all the time, right? So I, I need to whitelist, right? So same goes for VNC, okay? Uh, virtual network computing is also a form of uh, um, a remote control software, yeah? So sometimes you want to, you know, say, yes, I want to allow this software. And uh, the next is, if no, then the application exception matches, then if let's say this is truly a viruses, then uh, what do you want to do? You want to send an alert to administrator, you want to block or you want to declare, or maybe you want to delete the attachment, especially for email, for example. Okay. Yeah. So these are, these are the, the process. Okay. All right. So yeah, so these are the, uh, the, the four process that we mentioned before. Um, now alert basically means the device will permit the affected file and it will generate into the virus log, but it does not, it does not uh, delete the file, the, the delete the, the suspected virus file. Uh, block basically means uh, it will block the affected infected files and it will generate into the virus log. So from the log files you can uh, declare, you can check that. Uh, declare. Uh, declare is for viruses infected email messages. The device permit it, but it adds information into the email body, for example, email body, and to announce that this is uh, detected with viruses and it generated messages. So this one typically will appear in the SM SMTP traffic and also the POP3, uh, and also delete attachment, which is obviously. Uh, again, this is uh, also for SNMP, sending out email and receiving email, and they will, you know, they will delete the uh, uh, the attachment, and then they will put it into the log as well. 
Right, so this is the example of uh, checking the firewall uh, antivirus uh, result. So we, we typically go to the, the threats uh, logs. Okay, we look at the time, the date, what is the threat types, um, what is the risk, okay, and what is the uh, name of the threats. Okay, so this is an example. Uh, this is the application through FTP. So obviously this is the FTP. Uh, somebody tries to download something through FTP and then uh, this file has been uh, detected as the eclair, eclair viruses okay uh, action block right and this is the actual file name they try to download the, the actual file and from where to where yeah so this is the the actual uh, user that tries to to download okay and then uh, we also can uh, send an email and uh, to the uh, to the security uh, administrator okay so so we come to the end so let's talk about two quiz question before we wrap up all this um, so first question which of the following actions can be configured as an antivirus action for SMTP okay so I just mentioned earlier um, we can actually so answer is actually C and D okay we can actually declare okay declare and also we can delete the attachment okay so for SNMP SMTP sorry and also the pop 3 okay so question number two which of the following statements about intrusion prevention are false okay um, so the right answer is D. The uh, IPS can interwork with firewall for real-time blocking. Okay. Um, so now, now read, read carefully. This is actually a statement that we are supposed to look for false statement. Okay. Um, so, um, so what about the the A? A is the IPS support inline deployment. Uh, this is definitely true. The IPS can detect intrusion behavior as well as block them online. That means on the spot. Yes, correct. Uh, viruses can be regarded as the type of intrusion and defended against accordingly. Okay. Yeah. So this is actually uh, true as well. So we have true, three true statements and uh, D uh, is uh, the false statements. Okay. Right. So the summary for today uh, for this uh, chapter is that uh, we spoke about the, in the intrusion concept uh, what is the intrusion type and also what is the typical behavior and we spoke about IDS versus IPS one is detect without uh, prevent and one is uh, prevent that means uh, if they detect this kind of pattern they will block the traffic right and, and also probably they might also uh, remove the uh, the viruses file okay to to prevent the user from uh, uh, affecting viruses and after finally we also spoke about the uh, the antivirus concept and also some of the basic principles okay so thank you for listening for this session